Hello, my name is Irina Yakovlova, and my co-author is Rafael Bernard. We'd like to present our work about incorporating compaction trends through just statistical inversion. Just statistical inversion methods are widely used to inverse raw characterization workflows, even though they can be applied in any geological subsurface, algorithms have some assumptions. The main one is that just statistical methods expect the properties being model to be stationary, but quite often geological sections don't fit this assumption. And this needs to be handled with the introduction of depth trends in the inversion. If there is no significant trend observed in the data, a constant mean value can be used for the properties. However, when there is a vertical trend, the systematic change in the mean of the properties needs to be included. The approach used to solve this problem is quite simple. Uh, it considers each property as a sum of two components, the fixed trend, which is the same for all realizations, and the trended residual. This approach allows to use trends at any level of complexity. They can be defined per facies that directly in depth, they should follow geology. So can be laterally or even specially varying. As a just statistical inversion used in this analysis is a combination of Bayesian inference and Monte Carlo or Markov chain method. As the approach combines prior probabilities and variograms with seismic and well data into a global posterior probability. As the realizations, which are actually samples from the posterior probability distribution, are generated with MCMC sampling algorithm. Uh, the method allows to simultaneously model both facies and elastic properties possibly with reservoir properties, and doesn't require any starting model to all realizations. Each realization is unique and equally plausible. The variations between realizations reflect the non-uniqueness of the inversion problem and the uncertainty for a given set of input parameters. The inversion in case with trends is done the same way as without trends, using the trended residual properties during modeling instead of absolute values. In standard workflow, the process models absolute values of elastic properties, and they are used for synthetic generation inside the algorithm. In the workflow with trends, it models the trended residual properties. Fixed trends are then added to create absolute values of elastic properties for further synthetics generation. So the trended residual properties are modeled as stationary variations around the fixed trend. The trended residual properties satisfy just statistical method assumptions. The trend can be facies dependent and then added to the residuals according to the modeled facies to get the absolute values and correctly calculate reflectivities. Trends are fixed files, meaning that they are the same for all realizations. But facial volumes are modeled independently for each realization. Therefore, the final combination to create absolute values, volume is always unique. One more small difference is in just that part. Since the modeling is done for the trended properties, just stats are also defined for the trended residuals. The trending is beneficial for sharpening and refining the just statistical model. Residual elastic properties are modeled per facies. After removing the facies dependent trends, their PDF 
have a zero mean and a narrowed standard deviation. The trending also has a positive impact on variograms. Experimental variograms for the trended properties are easier to analyze since they have a clear seal, while before the trending, they gradually increase without reaching the seal. In this talk, we will compare results of just statistical inversion done in, with different compaction trends. As the data set used to show the effect of trends comes from a field located offshore of West Africa. Three facies were defined based on their separation in elastic and reservoir property domains. Uh, compaction trends can be clearly observed on all elastic logs. Also, uh, the impact of compaction can be seen on cross plots. Uh, the same cross plot here is colored by facies and by depths. So we see that values, elastic property values, highly depend on depths and the trend for sands and shales is not the same. Formation of trends is controlled by geological processes, mainly compaction, but other geological events have an impact too. So most of the time, the trend is the same for the whole area of interest and can be described by a simple linear or a more complex function, depending only on depths, but sometimes it can depend on more parameters and be even specially variable. In this presentation, for simplicity, we will look at constant vertical trends per facies, but in principle, the discussed approach allows working with trends having any level of special complexity. We have generated three test scenarios on this data set. So the first one is here just for the reference. The results are generated while ignoring the obviously observed vertical trend. The second uh, scenario is for a single trend used for all facies. And the last one is for facies dependent trends. Let's start with looking at facies volumes. Here we have sections of facies for a single random realization for each scenario. Geostatistical inversion in all tests has been done directly in depth and oil water contact has been incorporated in the model. So we have a clear separation between oil sands and wet sands. All project wells were kept as blind wells and can be used for QC. You can, you have this overlaid wells, blind wells. What we see here is that Facial sections below all water contact are more or less the same. The variations mainly caused by the random nature of realizations. However, in some areas, the positive impact of trends is undeniable. Like here, close to the top of the layer, we see that single trend and facial dependent trends um, helps to get a better match with blind wells. Also notice that with the same inversion settings in different scenarios, uh, facies dependent trends allow to model uh, the thinner geological features. So I mean that uh, thickness of these sand layers is, is the smallest. The features we see at this random single realization they are actually repeated in many other realizations. It can be confirmed by sections of uh, frequencies, in this case of oil sands. So for each scenario, 50 realizations have been generated and frequency volumes for oil sands created. Uh, high frequencies are shown in hot colors, low frequencies are blue. What we have here is that oil sands in blind wells are located in areas with higher frequencies on single trend and facial dependent trends sections. Uh, also, we see that on the last section, the overall frequencies of oil sands are slightly lower. It comes from the fact that layers modeled in this case are thinner. The inversion isn't constrained to wells, therefore, Thin layers of reservoirs 
can move slightly up or down on different realizations, reducing the frequency values in each micro layer or cell. As a result, for a thin layered section, like here, having the frequency volume with lower values can actually represent a better modeling accuracy. Now we can look at elastic properties too. A second test used a single trend uh, for all faces. Sometimes uh, defining trend in sand faces uh, can be difficult since there is a low number of samples in the vials uh, from which to estimate the trend usually. So um, elastic, oh, moreover, elastic property values in sands depend not only on depths, but also on many other factors like porosity, leaf shale, saturation, and so on. So the date range is much wider. Uh, quite often, trends in sands cannot be reliably defined. The single trend example here is for the extreme case, where the compaction trend in underlithified sands is defined in the same way as the compaction trend in shales. The results show that even for this extreme case, the output elastic properties have a significantly better match with blind wells than when trends are not used. There are also a lot of differences in small features, but they are easily noticeable on sections of other elastic properties like VPVS. The first panel has principal differences with others, but second and third uh, the differences between them are less noticeable. These details represent small geological features. Sands are not strongly lithified in this project. Uh, they are young, haven't been buried deeply, so their trend is different from the compaction trend for shales. Uh, for geological environments where sands are better lithified, have lower porosities or gas oil ratio values than in this data set, Using the same trend as for shales in sands can be considered. The main project deliverables, such as reservoir properties or geomechanical properties, are derived from the elastic properties. So differences in elastic properties control differences in reservoir properties. In this project, porosity has been co-simulated from realizations of facies and elastic properties. All project wells still blind here for this comparison, as since the third approach allows us to better model the elastic properties than in other tests, a reservoir properties core simulated uh, from them have a high accuracy as well. Uh, sections of uh, co-simulated porosity uh, where the differences between the tests are the most obviously visible. Uh, the fact that the last one has the best match with blind wells can be easily confirmed uh, visually. Results generated without trends tend to overpredict reservoir properties. Results generated with uh, facies dependent trends uh, model less reservoirs, I mean thinner layers, and more accurately predict reservoir properties. Quantitatively, the difference in modeled volumes can be measured at the ranking stage. Let's start with looking at the results generated without any trend, since we expect to see the biggest difference here. So we have a set of 50 realizations and uh, the ranking was done with two criteria. The first one is volume of sand. This one uses only the facies volume. Visually, it's hard to distinguish significant differences between realizations. They look quite close to each other. The second criterion also includes co-simulated porosity. In this case, some variations between rank realizations can be noticed even visually, um, since the reservoir properties are usually the most sensitive output. For comparison of different tests, just looking at the sections of different realizations, even after ranking like P10, P50, P90, isn't a reliable approach. 
quantitative uncertainty analysis was done for each scenario. For each one, we have a set of 50 realizations. For this analysis, we use realizations constrained to wells. So all realizations in all tests have perfect match with wells. All differences we see on these histograms come from areas outside of well control. The horizontal axis are the same on all plots for each criterion. It's obvious that with trends, the predicted values of sense volume is lower. It's due to more precise modeling of thin sand layers. Variance uncertainty, variations in predicted values between realizations also narrows when trends are incorporated. The difference in standard deviations between results without trends and with facies dependent trends is up to two times. The more detailed trends are added, the less is the variance uncertainty in generated results. The same pattern is observed for the second criterion for volume in sense, but the differences between results for analyzed tests are even bigger here. The histograms of calculated interpretation criterion become to be narrower as more detailed trend model use. Incorporating depth trends, what is actually adding more geological constraint, allows to reduce uncertainties in geostatistical, in geostatistical inversion results. Also, uh, geostatistical methods have a stationarity assumption. Compaction trends may need to be explicitly added to the modeling process, especially when they are obviously observed on input data, such as logs. Incorporating trends allows us to significantly increase the accuracy of the generated results. Facies, elastic properties, porosity, other reservoir or geomechanical properties. The higher the separation between facies in the elastic domain, the bigger the impact of using individual trends per facies. Using of more information, such as trends, helps to reduce uncertainties in the geostatistical inversion results. As with any inversion parameter constraining the result, the added data must be reliable. When facies dependent trends cannot be certainly estimated due to limited availability or other factors, it's better to stay on a safe side and not over constrain inversion. In such cases, using of a single trend is better than not using trends at all. The impact is most, no most noticeable on the reservoir properties, which are critical to make field development decisions, well planning and risk assessment. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.